something or presenting. All right, here we go. Hello, good morning, everyone. I am seeing that we are uh, officially live on Teams Live, uh, and I see some audience members. So hopefully you all can hear me OK, see me OK. Uh, the fun thing about this technology is there is a slight delay. So I am talking to you while seeing myself talking from like 10 seconds ago. Going to do my best to get over that uh, as we move forward uh, with the, the honors orientation today. Um, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Kyle Key. I am an assistant director and advisor with the honors program. Uh, as you saw in that email, we're excited to welcome you all. Uh, we know that this is um, very much uh, a different summer from what you were planning and anticipating, but we wanted to set up these sessions so that you as incoming students, um, and I'm sure parents in the audience too, uh, can hear a little bit more about what we do uh, in honors um, and what we mean by honors experiences um, and how that all works. So just to give you kind of a, a broad overview of our session today and a little bit of housekeeping, um, you will see that with Teams Live, uh, you don't have uh, the functionality to um, turn on your video camera or unmute your microphone or anything like that. Um, you are strictly an, an audience member. However, you should see the option to uh, ask a question. So you should see that live event Q&A. So please, I encourage you, feel free to ask a question at any time. Um, I will do my best uh, to not just be staring at my own face talking uh, and see that question and then address it. Um, or perhaps if it's a question uh, for one of our honor students who you'll hear from in just a moment, um, ask them that question. Uh, so again, feel free to shoot those questions over. Also though, keep in mind, we will have some dedicated time um, near the end of our session today uh, to still address any questions you might have. Uh, so with that being said, um, we will move forward with uh, our welcome here today, which I suppose is, is what I'm giving right now. And uh, I wanted to talk to you all uh, again, specifically about what our honors program is, give you kind of the, the broad overview, the, the 30,000 foot level as it were. Um, what makes our program unique when you compare it to a lot of other honors program or whatever the, the language used in other universities is that we focus specifically on experiential learning. Um, so it isn't, hey, get this set amount of credits or take this specific class sequence of honors, um, it is fully, um, I should say, solely focused on experiences. Um, what that also means is as honors advisors, because I'm one person of a team of awesome advisors, we really focus on getting to know students as individuals uh, because there isn't one size fits all when it comes to experiential learning as well. So we really work on understanding students uh, in some cases helping students understand themselves as they come into their majors and come into their college careers uh, and then move forward with experiences that align with their values, with their strengths, with who they want to be as individuals, um, where they want to be in terms of career and just life in the future. So again, that's my broad overview. Um, it is focused on experiences. Uh, you can, you know, ask 10 different honors students what those experiences were and get 10 different, very unique answers. Um, and that's kind of the whole point. Um, I will add in here the other thing that we do as honors advisors and just as part of the program in general is we, we focus a lot on the power and the value of reflection. So it isn't just all of the stuff that I just said with experiences and you know, experience one, experience two, experience three, boom, 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 going through those. No, it's really also taking the time as you're engaging in an experience to reflect on it. Why is, why is it important to you, this thing that you're doing? Um, what does it mean for you moving forward? How is it going to inform your future decisions? Uh, so we focus a lot on that ongoing reflection as well as the after the fact, after the experience has ended reflection. Um, so that I would say is the most important thing to keep in mind about our program, how it functions, where our focus is. Um, 
I strictly speak in the broad sense today because where are we early June? Um, it is still a few months until fall semester. Uh, you will be inundated with information uh, throughout the summer. Uh, I know this week is starting all of those academic sessions where you will be scheduling and all of that. So again, the value right now is just in you understanding the big picture of what we do. Um, we will get into all the specific types of experiences and options you have and opportunities you have later on. Um, in fact, there is a fall specific course, um, Gateway to University Honors, that you all will be and should be enrolling in. And I have a reminder of that um, later in the presentation. So don't feel like you have to like jot notes furiously right now, although odds are some of you have already been doing that as I've been speaking, which is awesome. Um, but I do have that specific reminder for you today because that's a really important takeaway too. Uh, so with that being said, I am neglecting my duties at monitoring any questions. OK, I don't see any so far. Excellent. Um, so again, I thank you all for joining, for being here today. I'm going to turn it over to the students in just a moment uh, and try to navigate uh, a slideshow while navigating a live event at the same time, which is proving to be very fun. Um, so let me turn it over to Sarah. First of all, I will let her introduce herself. And yes, things are working. All right, Sarah, I'm sending you on over and I'm about to move the presentation over as well. OK. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Mullins. I am a fourth year studying marketing with minors in business analytics and psychology. I am an honors ambassador, so I love doing this every summer, getting to see all of you and talk to you. So it's a little sad that I can't actually see any of you and I'm just talking to my screen right now. Uh, but I do look forward to getting to meet you all in the fall, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of my experiences. You can see a couple of them up on the screen. As you can see, I do like to travel. So one of the great things about the honors program is we have these seminars where you get to study something for the semester and at the end of the semester you get to travel to that country. So that's been a big part of my experiences. But I also like to do things that help me grow personally, like an exploring leadership uh, seminar and Chrysalis, which was a self-designed experience where I got to help run a retreat for a weekend. And this is only a couple of my experiences. I've done more than this, but these are just the ones that I wanted to showcase for all of you guys today. So what's cool about the seminars is that despite being a business major, I got to do a lot of things that weren't necessarily related to business. So my first year I did go to Vienna to study music because music is really important to me. I play a couple of instruments. So getting to study music history and travel to Vienna was incredible. And then I went to Chile where we did astronomy and photography. We were looking at anthropology and geology. Again, none of which are directly related to my major, but it was an incredible experience. Uh, over winter break, I got to go to Iceland and just this past, and I'll focus on that in a minute, uh, but just this past semester, I was supposed to go to South Africa to uh, help small business owners with their business putting together business plans, creating collateral, and just putting more money back into their economy. But unfortunately, I was unable to travel there due to quarantine, uh, which while it's upsetting, I'm hoping to travel there in the future. But we still put together our small business plans and sent them to South Africa. So hopefully we can still help our business owners despite not being there. The experience that I'm going to focus on today is travel writing in Iceland. Uh, in high school, I was a student journalist for a magazine. And after high school, uh, writing fell to the wayside a little bit. So when the seminar came up, it was a really great opportunity to get back into writing. And Iceland is a beautiful country. So I decided to take the seminar. We had an incredible professor. And so throughout the semester, we spent time studying different writing techniques, different authors studying Icelandic history, what it's like now, a lot of their natural features. And then we traveled to Iceland as a group. What's really great about these seminars for travel is that this is probably the most affordable you will ever have the opportunity to travel. Uh, part, there's scholarships available and there's a lot of different opportunities. 
but it's also the people that you get to travel with. You spend the semester getting to know these people and then you get to go to another country where you don't necessarily speak the same language as everyone else. So you're all just in it together, having a great time and learning new things. Um, so in Iceland, it was a lot of going to different natural features. We hiked a glacier. I went horseback riding. We saw the Northern Lights, which is a mind blowing experience. That was so much fun. Uh, even though it was absolutely freezing outside and none of us could stand outside of the bus for more than about 15 minutes before we gave up and sat inside and waited for the Northern Lights to come out. And it took a couple tries. We did have two or three trips before we actually saw the Northern Lights but it was absolutely worth it. So we got to spend time with amazing people doing incredible things and having these adventures that I never thought that I would get to have thanks to honors. And as part of the process, we were writing our own stories, keeping a blog, writing journals, and I've actually kept up journaling because of that, because I found that throughout the semester when I was writing things down, just things that I was thinking about, things that I was noticing, even if it wasn't directly related to a story, it helped me reflect on a regular basis, which is one of the big foundations of the honors program. So I've kept that up after the experience and I'm really glad that I did. So these honors experiences, each one of them has impacted me differently. And I'm so glad that I've gone on all of them and have had those experiences. And I'm really excited for you guys to see what honors is all about and figure out what things you're passionate about and get to explore those. All right, that's all I got. All right, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, I was I was like struggling to find my unmute button. Uh, this is definitely a, a fun adjustment to be a part. Of. <laughs> um, so I will uh, again, if you have questions for Sarah right now, you could send them uh, to the chat, but we do have some time afterward. Um, I am going to. Introduce Shivani next, or I should say let her introduce herself. Oh, and while Kyle does that, I realized I forgot to mention that the advice that I have in the little corner there to oh, step out of your comfort zone and do the yes. things that intimidate you. I highly recommend that. I It took me a while to figure that out, but once I did, I started having incredible adventures. So highly recommend for all of you. And yeah, thank you. That is definitely good advice for anyone, for incoming students especially. Um, so Shivani, I think you are up there now. Let me get it over to your slide. Hi guys, <clears throat> my name is Shivani. I am going to be a third year in the medical sciences program. Um, and I started out my journey um, as a freshman. I was not in honors. I actually transitioned into honors later my freshman year. Um, and from there I became an ambassador because I love speaking about this program. And for someone who has been in the program and hasn't been in the program, I can tell you that it's definitely worth it. And I've really enjoyed all of my time in honors so far. Um, and so in my short time, uh, my very first experience is what I'll be talking about in a minute, but I've done um, the Women in Science Engineering Fellowship, and that was over the summer. We were paired up with a, um, a faculty researcher um, and spent the summer doing workshops with Y and like the fellows you meet there and then doing research. And the second um, experience I did was continuing working in my research lab as an internship um, while taking classes. And so this past spring, I took a class called From Neurons to Picasso. Um, and though I love hearing about Sarah's travels whenever we, we do these presentations together, I feel like I'm a little bit lacking on the exploratory sides of the international experiences, but I've loved what I've done here. Um, and so the Neurons Picasso class was unfortunately cut a little short this year, but it was combining like a lot of um, artistic philosophy and like neuroscience, and it was so much fun. Um, and then this summer, <laughs> I am doing um, the research fellowship and that's been online um, and then I'm taking I'm doing a globe med fellowship as well and that's like a global public health organization where I'm working with the headquarters and designing kind of um, as a communications team kind of like their different guidelines for communication and I'm working on a newsletter um, I'm also doing a self design experience where I'm looking more into the transition to honors gateway um, kind of to look at how I can help other transition students in the boat that I was in. So I'm gonna talk about women in science and engineering a little bit more. So when I was in high school, I kind of came from like a, a pretty rural area where um, we didn't have a lot of exposure to a lot of science or research. I think I went to one science fair with my science club. I think I cried at it because I felt so out of place. Like everyone was so much smarter than I was, didn't feel like I belong. 
Um, and so when I came here, I was like, let me get research another try. I feel like it wasn't fair the first time. Um, and so I got partnered, got paired up with this amazing faculty member. Um, and so we study endometriosis. Endometriosis is a reproductive health um, disease where um, the tissue of the uterus is, it grows outside of there basically. And it's like a different kind of tissue, but it's very problematic. And if you've heard of it, I'm sure you know, but um, it's definitely something that I'm very passionate about. Um, and I'm, I still work in the lab, taking a little bit of a break this summer, um, but this whole year and last summer was really dedicated to studying that. Um, and I'm so thankful for, for my faculty mentor um, and, and just like, the opportunity to explore my passions in a different way that I didn't think I was gonna like. Um, my favorite TV show is Parks and Rec. Um, and so I have to quote Leslie Nope, who is quoting Theodore Roosevelt, but I think it's in the last episode where she says, the best prize life has to offer is a chance to work hard at work worth doing. And I feel that really resonates with all the things that I am passionate about and what I hope to do in the future. Thank you, Shivani. Uh, I, as a fellow huge Parks and Rec fan, um, I have to say I love that quote as well. <laughs> um, but let me uh, pause for a moment and ask uh, any questions for each of our um, honors ambassadors, our presenters for today, uh, any questions about their specific experiences um, or impressions of the program, or I know Sarah shared some very valuable advice uh, for incoming students, um, any questions about advice? I wanna give you all an opportunity um, while also bearing in mind that there is that delay that I mentioned with Teams Live. So, um, so yes, yeah, send, send any questions in the chat, please. And if you don't have any questions for Sarah or Shivan, uh, Shivani particularly, um, any questions for me? Again, I'm an advisor for the program. Um, I'm happy to give you more insight while also mindful not to be overwhelming you with information um, because there will be a lot of information thrown your way this summer and this fall. I'm very comfortable with that uncomfortable silence, so I can just wait here until a question pops up. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that to you all. Um, I wanted to um, give a few other thoughts as uh, we begin to wrap some things up here today. Uh, you've heard from students about what their specific experiences looked like um, and hopefully uh, what I said earlier resonated for you a little bit um, more strongly in that everyone of course is going to be different and we want to encourage that unique perspective in each individual so that they're choosing honors experiences that make the most sense for them, uh, that ultimately bring value uh, to their time at the university um, rather than make it feel like some sort of checkbox uh, that they have to get through um, in order to, you know, list on a resume, I have graduated with honors. So that is really what we're about and I believe you will see that more and more as you come into the program, um, as you engage in that uh, first year course that I talked about, Gateway to University Honors. Uh, and, and again, as you begin to actually meet your honors advisor, because we each have, um, or each student has a dedicated honors advisor. All right, see some questions here. All right, so the first question, uh, can you talk a little about honors housing? Well, um, in the context of our current times, no, I can't I can't say much for sh for certain, unfortunately, um, because I know this month in particular, uh, all of us, staff, faculty, current students, incoming students are really awaiting to hear what the university is deciding um, about the fall and about this upcoming academic year in general um, because there are still those very valid questions of will fall classes be online um, will there be some sort of uh, adjusted fall semester that i hear some institutions around the country are going to that potentially starts a little earlier ends a little later uh, I can tell you I am not at that level in the university to be in the room where those discussions are being made. 
Uh, so I don't know anything more than anyone else does, um, than any of you do. So uh, we are still waiting. Um, I do know that an announcement went out to all students and I hope incoming students. I know it went out to current students, um, but last month an announcement went out that said there would be a decision from the president's office by the end of June. So that's what we're waiting for, quite honestly, at this point, um, because I would imagine the housing decision is going to have to align very closely with the fall semester decision in online, not online, some sort of hybrid, um, some sort of shifted semester. So yes, we are in a holding pattern there, um, waiting to see what happens. Um, Sarah, Shivani, do you have anything to add um, from what I just said? I know you are both experiencing the same thing. You're waiting to hear. Um, and I think as far as honors housing goes, I think it will depend on what, what regular housing even looks like. I don't think they can make a decision about honors before, before we even know what's going to happen with the rest of housing. So I think that's a question that will be answered after we have a, a, a plan or an idea of what we're even going to look like in the fall. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so so yeah, I, I apologize. I know that's not much of an answer, but it is the, the closest thing that I have to an answer, that we have to an answer at this point in time. Um, and I saw the next question that came in, how is quarantine affecting honors? Uh, I know I kind of just touched on this, um, but I will say a little bit more broadly speaking, uh, a lot of students who um, have been engaging in experiences in the spring, in the summer, unfortunately, a lot of experiences have either been cut short or canceled. Um, Shivani referenced that earlier um, in her seminar from the spring uh, because spring classes all finished online. Uh, any seminar that had a travel component or any study tour that honors was doing, um, they were canceled in in the spring. Uh, similarly for the summer, those have those were canceled as well. So I know that it has been a very big adjustment for everyone um, all the way around. You know, from from students clearly having to um, you know in in some cases miss out on uh, trips, experiences that they had been looking forward to for years. Uh, I know I talked with some students who were excited to, one, very excited to go to um, Italy and Rome as, as part of an art and architecture uh, study abroad course. Um, others who were going to uh, the Brazilian rainforest, the Amazon. Um, again, a lot of these things, unfortunately, were, were canceled for very good reason, but that doesn't take away from the fact that um, it is a loss. Uh, it is a loss in terms of that experiential learning. So as honors advisors, we have tried to be very cognizant and mindful that um, that's what students are going through right now, that not just that loss of sort of normal life, but also the loss of some experiences that, especially if they are planners, um, and some of you in the audience out there probably know exactly what I'm talking about. If you are ready to plan out the next four or five years of your degree, you know, you might also get to that point where your honors experiences are planned out for the next several years. Um, so as I said, we're being mindful about that, not just to honor um, that loss, but also to then help the students uh, kind of sort through that and figure out, well, because this is our reality, um, how do we move forward now and figure out, okay, if this experience was either canceled or ended in a different way, how do we move forward with the rest of your time here at the university um, and create some experiences that can still be meaningful, um, that still capture some of those aspects uh, of, of learning um, uh, that, that you have really been looking for? So yeah, really great questions, um, absolutely. Feel free to uh, ask more questions as I move on to our next slide here today. The next slide is that big reminder that I mentioned to you all earlier, um, the course, the fall course. Um, basically, this is our intro to honors. Um, it's honors HNRS 1010, Gateway to University Honors. Uh, we will be running various reports uh, as we get later in the summer um, and fall is getting close to beginning to make sure that all of our incoming honors students are uh, enrolled in this course. 
Um, but please take note of that right now. Make sure that when you are meeting with your academic advisor, whether that's this week, next week, several weeks from now, and you're getting your fall schedule uh, sorted, make sure that you are enrolling in that course. Um, that is an absolutely a must have uh, to stay in honors, to continue in the program, because it really goes into a lot more of that depth that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so not just about what honors is, um, how to make sense of it for yourself, the different types of experience uh, to engage in, but it also goes into the interpersonal aspect of it. Um, you heard me mention students, you should be choosing experiences that align to your values, to your strengths, to the, the types of things you want to engage in. So there is a lot of that um, self-reflection, uh, self-discovery built into that course as well. Uh, so make sure you enroll in that. That is my big reminder for the day. Uh, and my final slide here is to give you a, a welcome. I know that it is not in the same way that we all anticipated, um, but as I said, we are very much excited um, to have you become part of our honors family. We're excited to meet you in the fall, all of us advisors. Yes, we understand that it's most likely going to be through virtual appointments, um, which I am having a very difficult time adjusting to because I cannot make eye contact and I am one of those outgoing individuals who really needs that positive uh, feedback from the audience that that shows they're nodding along or reacting to what I'm saying. Um, so yes, a little tough, uh, but we are very excited to welcome you. Um, and as part of that welcome, um, please stay tuned to your UC email. That part's very important, UC email. Uh, you'll be getting contacted um, by a current student uh, to learn a little bit more about the program, to welcome you to the program, how you might begin to get involved. Uh, so keep that in mind um, because yes, you can get involved from the very beginning. Uh, I know that the page on our website about first year um, in honors that led you to this session here today even talks about, hey, if you have space in your schedule in the fall, let's say I'm someone coming in with some AP credit or some CCP credit and I have my uh, English composition already taken care of, so I have some space. If there's an honors seminar that you can take in the fall, that's awesome because you're already going um, in your experiential learning. And I will tell you the honor seminars are almost without fail, some of the most engaging classes you can be a part of here at the university. Um, the faculty put them together very, very thoughtful. Uh, the types of conversations you will have with other students, very insightful. So I highly recommend that. Um, I will let you all in on a little secret. I'm a graduate of the University of Cincinnati as well. Um, I was in the honors program during my time at UC, uh, and I took several of those honors seminars um, and still some of my fondest memories, some of my most meaningful memories from those years um, are the things that were born out of those honor seminars. Uh, so let me look one more time. Any final questions um, for us here today? Give you some time to think about it. And if, <laughs> oh, go ahead. Sarah. I was going to say, I just wanted to throw in about those honor seminars that yeah, they please, are please. incredibly helpful. I've taken a couple of them. And what's really cool is that those seminars are not just put together by professors. When honors is approving those seminars, they have students like myself on the panel who get to put an input on how they can improve classes. To get those classes approved, they have to make it through the panel of professors, honors advisors, students. So we're all putting in a lot so that you guys can have the best classes possible. And just on top of that, the more you get involved, the more you get to decide what that will look like for you. So getting to be on that panel, part of getting involved. So what's really great about our honors program is that you get to decide what it looks like for you. Absolutely. Just to throw that in there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for throwing it in. Uh, oh, and I, have a message that I have bad network quality right now. All right, that is fun. Um, some of the other things to deal with, um, with live virtual sessions. Um, well, if I'm not chopping up too bad, if I'm not delayed too bad on the audience's end right now, uh, I want to once again, thank you all for being here today, 
for learning more about honors. Um, again, the focus was really to hear from students themselves so that you might begin, yes, knowing that each student's going to approach it differently, but you might begin conceptualizing, oh, here are the kind of things that I might do. Here are the sorts of things I might engage in. So there will be many conversations ahead. Again, Gateway, uh, the Gateway course will be extremely helpful. Um, and as you meet with your advisor for the first time and have those deeper conversations, I think that will provide a lot of insight as well um, in terms of what you might do, how you might do it. So I want to wish everyone um, the best. Uh, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for giving me a reason to um, dress nice for the first time in two months. That was an adjustment to be, get used to as well. Um, but thank you. Um, we will see you in the fall or we will see you before then. And take care of yourselves. Bye.